We are D and Allie. Come along and join us aboard Journey. Oh, oh yeah, seasons change. No promise of tomorrow, but that's okay. Just live in the moment day by day. Willis is safely back in North Carolina, and we have enjoyed our week visiting. But it is time to return to Journey in Titusville. Deadpool has been keeping a good watch over her while we were gone. We explore some more of Titusville, a friendly community that we love. Next, we head out to Anchor and stage for the rocket launch, which we were able to return in time for. We made our way out in front of the launch area and settled in, but the launch was delayed a day due to the winds, so we were rocking one extra day to see the launch. We were not really enjoying our anchoring, but after watching the launch, we changed our minds and of course the sunsets tried to make it all better. We were up early for the launch. Pretty funny listening to us because the live stream was almost a minute behind. So the launch confused us at first. This was a great experience, breathtaking to watch. So glad we were able to have this first hand experience. Enjoy the show. <gasps> oh shit. Dang, that's bright. <sighs> what? What is that? Look at that. The 
rocket is up and the sun is rising, so it's time to continue moving north. We're hoping to make Fort Matanza by sunset. We pass through some remote areas before New Smyrna Beach and catching our first glimpse of the Ponce de Leon Inlet Lighthouse. I just love lighthouses, so sorry for all the different shots of this beautiful lighthouse. We pass through Daytona, catching some great shots of the city from the waterway, and continue on north to Fort Matanza, where we spot Poseidon looking over the waterway and catch sight of one of the many bald eagles we will see on our journey north. We make the fort and the anchorage and are welcomed by our dolphin friends. The fort is still closed due to COVID. Why is this fort here just 15 miles south of St. Augustine? Well, the first conflict goes back to 1565, the year of the founding of St. Augustine, and almost 175 years before the construction of Fort Matanza. This is when another story was played out at the Matanza Inlet, the massacre of the French Huguenots, the incident that led to the naming of the river Matanzas, the Spanish word for slaughters. But by, 19, by 1740, it was no longer the French, but rather the British who were a threat to the Spanish Florida colony. Whoever controlled Florida controlled the rich shipping lanes coming from the Spanish Caribbean. The British had unsuccessfully laid siege to St. Augustine twice, in 1702 and 1740. Florida Governor Montiano knew the British would be back and would most likely attempt to come through the unguarded inlet at Matanzas so he immediately ordered a fort to be built to guard these southern approaches. Just as the 1702 siege grew out of the larger European conflict, so would the next attack on St. Augustine, James Oglethorpe's siege of 1740, which grew out of the War of Jenkins' Ear, a dispute between British and Spain over trade in the Caribbean. The British siege convinced the governor that he needed more than just a wooden tower at Matanza's Inlet. Had the British been able to seize that point, they would probably have been able to starve the city into surrender. Montanio, therefore, put his career on the line. He did not even ask the king's permission before he ordered engineer Pedro Ruiz de Orlano to build a strong stone tower at Matanzas. After a quiet night at the fort, we headed north to pass through St. Augustine. We soon started seeing some beautiful homes and the Bridge of Lions. The city is beautiful from the water, and we caught a glimpse of Isolina on a mooring ball in the mooring field. As you round toward the inlet, you get your first view of Castillo de San Marcos. Spanish for St. Mark's Castle. This is the oldest masonry fort in the continental United States. It is located on the western shore of Matanzas Bay in the city of St. Augustine. It was designed by the Spanish engineer Ignacio Daza, with construction beginning in 1672, 107 years after the city's founding by the Spanish. Possession of the fort has changed six times, all peaceful, between Spain, Great Britain, and the United States. Under the United States control, the fort was used as a military prison to incarcerate members of the Native American tribes, starting with the Seminole. Also, as we passed through St. Augustine, we saw the Great Cross. The plaque at the base of the cross, which is 208 feet high, says that it marks the approximate site where in 1565 the Cross of Christianity was first permanently planted in what is now the United States. That's right, Jesus arrived in America here first, over a half a century before the pilgrims even touched their toes to Plymouth Rock. The Great Cross that is known was erected in 1966 to mark the 400th anniversary of that momentous day. It's built of 70 tons of stainless steel plates packed with concrete in its lower third to prevent toppling by hurricanes. It's part of the Shrine of Our Lady of La Leche and its height was designed so that everyone near St. Augustine could see it and be reminded of the religious beginnings of our nation. And finally, the St. Augustine Lighthouse guarding the inlet. We catch sight of another bald eagle 
and head on into the free dock at Sisters Creek in Jacksonville, Florida, just before some storms make their way into the area. We are living in the moment, capturing enjoyment. Oh, we are living in the moment, life full of enjoyment. Oh, oh. 